studio tonight is Chief Government Whip, Joel Fitzgibbon, and Liberal MP Kelly O'Dwyer. Joel, first, thanks, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, no way. Now, you were surprised as, um, so you might not have been, but Kelly, so you were a bit surprised because we were all there. Well, I think, I think everybody's a little bit surprised. I was actually in an economics committee hearing at the time, and I was with a number of Labor members of Parliament, and I actually informed them that the election had been called. You're yeah, right. So I think, I think a few people were surprised. So, why, why has the Prime Minister done this now? Well, I think she explained that at the press club uh, today. It is a surprise, and a surprise to all in the, the parliamentary caucus, I, I have to say. And some might describe it as uh, crazy brave, but I'm sure she's got uh, smart strategic, strategic intentions, and we'll see where it takes us. Because your government has been struggling in the polls since, since the last election. You know, we heard about those marginal seats that this week, an opinion poll said you could lose up to 18, 18 seats. Why subject Aussies to such a long election campaign when it's clear, you know, you're in big trouble with voters and you're likely to lose? Well, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Some might argue that we, as the government, lose some strategic advantage by keeping the election date open uh, to, you know, to enable us to run at the best possible time. At the same time, it puts pressure on Tony Abbott because he's getting away with a fair bit of rhetoric um, and this will force him, given we're in, if you like, an informal election campaign to put some, uh, some meat on the bones and to start explaining how he's going to pay for all these election promises. Kelly, I'll let you respond to that. How do you feel about, about the, the fact that now you know, your party's going to have to play the, the other side? Eight months. Well, look, um, as Bob quite rightly pointed out, I think the election day announcement is a surprise. When the election was going to be, though, isn't really a surprise. The Prime Minister has said for some time it was going to be in September. She was going to go for as long as humanly possible. Um, and, and, you know, in terms of what Joel said before about uh, putting some meat on the bones, uh, Tony Abbott released uh, some policies only last weekend. Uh, it was an amalgam of the policies that have been released today. She's giving the press club address tomorrow. Um, the real issue, though, is that the Prime Minister today gave the press club address. Um, she was talking about uh, all of these announcements to do with you know, policy promises. We know, though, that none of these policy promises are actually funders. There's a $120 billion black hole. And when she was actually pressed as to how in government she is going to fund this, she said you're going to have to wait until the budget. Um, now, you know, I think, I think it's a bit different when you're in opposition and a bit different from when you're in government. The Prime Minister herself refuses to answer questions as to how she's going to be funding those promises. And uh, her record of delivery is incredibly well, poor. There is a lot of questions about how both of your parties are going to fund what she said they're going to fund and what they're going to cut, what they're going to change over the next few months. But I want to hear from our listeners tonight. Paul's on the line from the Blue Mountains. Paul, tell us, what do you want to see this election? What kind of campaign do you want? I just want to see some real issues on the table. So I think Australians are so sick and tired of hearing the bickering amongst the politics. And, um, it, you know, it, it's just all you hear from opposition is criticising government, government defending. And really all we want to know is what's going to happen and, and, and you know, who's going to be affected and, 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 and see it actually follow through. Thanks for the call, Paul. Let's, let's put it to our police guys. Can you promise that this isn't going to be a nasty campaign because it is a long one? You promise it's not going to get personal and, and really dirty. Well, from my own perspective, so far, I, I agree with your list. I think it should be about policy issues. It should be about the record of the current government. It should be about what we can propose as an alternate government. It should be about uh, the facts, and people can then judge based on an assessment on what is put towards them and put uh, before them. So, you know, my, my view is it should be all about that. Joel, do you think that that's what we've been well, seeing in Parliament? Do you think that that's what's actually going to happen in reality over the next eight months? Look, I can't obviously make any promises on Tony Abbott's part, but I can tell you that the government will be focused on policy, and we're happy to debate, to debate the policies, including the costings uh, of them. Look, I think Paul is absolutely right. They want to set the picture in your side. They just want to hear about our respective visions uh, for the country. Uh, Julie Gillard articulated her today. No doubt Tony Abbott will attempt to do so um, tomorrow, but... Absolutely true. People want to hear us talking about the things that matter to the Australian community. I'm just going to go to De Denise, who we have on the line here. De Denise, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Now, you, you've got a bit of a problem with the election date. Tell us, what's the issue for you? Um, well, September 14th is actually Yom Kippur, which is um, the probably the highest of holidays in the Jewish calendar. So... This is the day you can't drive you get out for, for Orthodox Jews, is that correct? Well, it's, it's the day where you atone all your sins, so you're meant to be 
fasting and you should be in synagogue and um, yeah you can't drive you can't you can't really do anything so um, it when I heard it was the 14th I was very surprised because um, I can't imagine an election date being drawn on Christmas Day or Good Friday and I think it's just a little bit um, insensitive that it can be called on another holiday for another religion. Well, let's put this to Joel, who's a member of the government. Thanks for the call, Janine. Joel, what do you think about that? Well, it's obviously a valid point. Um, I don't know whether the Prime Minister's office considered that. This, this is a very difficult task. Um, you miss, make sure you don't touch with the AFL Grand Final, the NRL Grand Final. She could have helped I'm not, earlier. Uh, I'm not saying that was as important uh, as the day, as, as is the 14th or some of the Jewish faith, but I think that the reality is no matter when you have it, you're going to touch with something. Well, we're going to go to the Greens Deputy Leader, Adam Batten, who we also have in our Melbourne studio. How are you, Adam? I'm doing well. Tell us, what's the Greens' reaction to this news today? Oh, I think it's good that we've got a date. I think there should be six terms, actually, so that you know from the day one of the election when the next election is going to be, because I think one thing that probably is even more frustrating than a uh, sort of nine months of campaign is nine months of speculation about when the date is going to be, and that's completely pointless. I mean, it's given me to the Greens because it's your first election without Bob Brown. You personally hold your seat, Adam, by a very thin margin, and the Greens polling is down since Christine Milne took over for Bob. How are you going to make sure that that slide doesn't continue for the Greens? Oh, look, on the latest figures, it's back up, and in my uh, seat of Melbourne, it's uh, certainly going to be a cracker of an election. It is a marginal seat. Uh, I'm going to be attempting to make history by winning us for the first time for the Greens in our own right. I expect that. Uh, Labor and the Coalition will work together and collaborate to try and uh, oust the Greens. I think that's something that they uh, think they've got more in common with each other. But I think young people will play a significant role in this election, including in uh, in Melbourne. Uh, and I'd heartily encourage everyone who's listening to get out and enroll to vote. So can I just make a comment on that side too? Because I think it's important just to note that um, just despite the conspiracy theories of, of Adam's affair about uh, some, some form of coalition between the Labor Party and the Liberal Party on the Greens, there's only one coalition, and that's between the Greens and the Labor Party to form the current government. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure where he's coming from. Yeah, can I say so? If I've not spent 30 seconds talking with any of my Liberal friends about doing in the Greens, I, I can assure you of that more important things on my agenda. But I will, but I will take, spend all the time necessary to hold them to account on some of their promises in the electorate. Well, it's really very interesting to see how preferences go because there has been a bit of interesting chat over the last few months about that, so I'm sure we're going to have plenty of time to follow up about that. But I want to ask you, Kelly, about Queensland because the Liberal Party has been suffering a bit of a backlash there in Queensland. Many people are unhappy with the Conservative Campbell Newman government, slashing off government jobs and funding in that state. Are we going to see cutbacks that happen in Queensland? Is that going to happen on a national scale under an Abbott government? Well, look, I think uh, there are quite a few issues in what you've actually put to me, and I wouldn't, yeah, accept, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't actually accept the premise. I'm afraid of your question there, folks. Um, well, look, it is there true some... that, that a lot of people in the government service did lose their jobs in Queensland. Is that going to happen? Is there going to be... So, so let's, let's just put that, let's just break that down and put that in context, because, you know, Campbell Newman has had to make some very difficult decisions about the budget position in Queensland. He's had to do that because of the extraordinary debt that he inherited from the Labor government, the past Labor government, and he has committed to, to getting on and doing a few things in Queensland. He actually wants to build things. He wants to make sure that people have the right infrastructure available to them. Uh, he wants to make sure that there are better services provided. So, so you know, let, let, let's just have a look at Queensland on the one hand. Um, but, but, look, there is always going to be speculation about, you know, whether we're going to win seats or lose seats. I'm not a pollster. I can't really give you any commentary on that. All I can say is that we are going to be making sure that people understand our vision for the country to have a, a more prosperous, more secure Australia to actually build jobs to ensure that we can build a better future for all Australians. Well, and, and that's going to be the task that we're absolutely committed to. Well, let, let, let's go to the big issues of what the policy... Hopefully this election is going to be about policy. So we want to hear from Triple J listeners, what do they want this election to be about? What will decide your vote? What are the policies that matter to you? Give us a call, one three hundred zero triple five three six. That's one three hundred zero triple five three six, Or send us a text, 0439 We'll have a live studio guest back in just a moment. You can put your policy questions to them and what's important to you. But first, one of the biggest issues is going to be the carbon tax. How it's changed your life, if it's changed your life at all. The government holds it up as one of their biggest achievements. And Tony Abbott says he's going to get rid of it. A short time ago, I spoke to the Climate Change Minister, Greg Combe, to ask him a few questions about it. 
easily the most vigorously contested issue in politics over the last few years, but the government has got it done. And bringing a carbon price in on carbon pollution has not caused the end of the world, as claimed by Tony Abbott. In fact, it's proven to be a manageable reform, and greenhouse gas emissions uh, have fallen. So uh, that's a pretty important change. Uh, in the future, there's another really important issue, I think, for young people and future generations, that's the national broadband network. This is something that the coalition, Tony Abbott, is dead set opposed to and is going to stop and get rid of. Uh, but it is, in fact, the most important infrastructure investment that the country could make in its future. And so uh, these are two really important issues. Minister, you mentioned the carbon tax, and a big part of this election will come down to trust. A lot of people still see the carbon tax as a broken promise. There was also the, the pledge to return the budget to surplus, which now Labor has gone back on, and we also saw the government backflip on offshore processing. How can young people trust Labor again when one thing is said and then you get into government and another thing is done? Well, as you go through life and as you go through politics, political life in particular, then you have to change as circumstances change. And a minority government was formed at the end of the last election, and uh, one of the you know, things that was negotiated as a consequence of forming government was the introduction of a carbon price. But I actually think that the biggest fear about climate change has been told has been told by Tony Abbott, and that is his argument that he's going to get rid of it. I mean, what, what does he propose to do about climate change and greenhouse gas emissions? Whether you can blame the carbon tax or not, a lot of people do blame the carbon tax for their problems, for, for the economy's problems. And are you concerned that people will find it attractive, Tony Abbott's promise, that he will get rid of the carbon tax? Do you worry about that? No, it's just a stupid position that's unsustainable. I'm not going to make it absolutely clear. There is no way in the world that Tony Abbott will be getting rid of it. You know, it's a he says he will, that, though. <laughs> well, people can make their judgment about what politicians say and do, but I can assure you that it would be a stupid policy position to get rid of it. He will not get rid of it. One thing your government hasn't done is increase the new start allowance, which does affect a lot of our listeners. Youth allowance as well. Tell us, Australia has seen a sustained period of economic growth. Will this be something that you promise over the next seven months, that you will increase the new start allowance? Well, it's not for me to be making those commitments on the run. You know, the government will articulate its position in coming months. I mean, it has been a very chaotic term of government. You, you have to admit that. We've had the, the Peter Slipper affair, the Craig Thompson affair. There hasn't been a solution delivered on asylum seekers. The government compromised on pokies, something that they said they would really address. How can you guarantee that another Labor government will actually deliver solutions when you haven't already on, on those issues I just listed? Well, we've done many things. I agree it's been a pretty uh, well-argued period of government, but a lot of that's just hype that Tony Abbott has created. When you step back and look at the issues and what the government has done, whether it be through very significant improvements in funding to our health system or through massive improvements in funding and opportunities at tertiary education institutions or the rolling out of the National Broadband Network or acting on climate change, uh, we've done a, a huge amount. Those are the things that ultimately matter. Minister Greg Combe, thanks so much for chatting to Triple J. No worries, Sophie. Thanks, Sheila. And that was Greg Combe speaking to me a little earlier, and we will be hearing a lot about the carbon tax this year. And in the next year, we have jobs that's given from the government, Liberal MP Kelly Ojuai and Greens Deputy Leader Adam Bant. Kelly, tell us, we just heard the Minister there saying that Tony Abbott's not going to be able to get rid of the carbon tax. How's he going to do it? Tell us. Well, he said you've got to look at what politicians say and what they do and that's probably the only thing his statement that I can actually agree with. Uh, the Prime Minister and the Government actually made a commitment that it wouldn't deliver a carbon tax and yet it did. Uh, so how are you going to get rid of it? Well, we, we, we have got a plan within the first week of a parliament that is a coalition government that we will bring in legislation to, to get rid of the Government's carbon tax. Now we have an alternative plan to get rid of uh, you know, uh, the carbon in, in the atmosphere and, and that is to ensure that we have a direct action plan which is which is costed, it is fully capped. Um, we know that the carbon tax is having a very, very significant impact and a very negative one, not only on households where we have seen the Prime Minister admit that the electricity prices have gone up by over 29% you know, over the last uh, 12 months alone, but also on manufacturing and 
business. The Australian Industry Group released uh, only yesterday uh, a document that said that uh, far from the government saying it was only going to have an impact of around about 10% on, on business, it was more like 15% and it's going up and up because they have to then pass on costs. Yeah, I didn't really hear then how you're going to do it, but I'm just going to ask Joel, Joel, are you worried that people are going to be very attracted by this idea of getting rid of the carbon tax? No, I'm not. I think people are now persuaded that it's necessary to take action on uh, climate change and, you know, both political parties, the major parties, have the same target as a 5% reduction. Um, so, um, uh, Kelly talks about their direct action plan. This is a plan to uh, put billions of dollars into certain industries to help them reduce their carbon. Now, that's taxpayers' money. They've got to raise that money somehow. They've got to find these billions of dollars, and it's also, of course, they're going to abolish the carbon tax, which, by the way, raises revenue, which is used to subsidise other renewable energy sectors and, of course, to compensate people for the carbon tax. So there's no magic pudding here. Kelly used to work for Peter Christopher. He was fond of this magic pudding phrase. Well, guess what, Kelly? You're just not articulating with the Australian people and young people listening how you're going to fund these things. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I can, I can, I'm, I'm happy to I want to hear from, I want to hear from Chaz from the Chaser because he's super excited about this news. He's got eight months. Chaz, how are you going? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going well. I feel very sorry to interrupt that debate. <laughs> no, you saved me. You saved me. We, look, we've, got, we've got eight months of this. We, we need to you know, just have it in small groups and ja- grabs. So this is good news for comedians like yourself, Chaz. Oh, look, it's fantastic news for me because it means I'm employed. <laughs> I think everyone's going to be happy that I'm off the dole. You're going to try and pick some kind of eight-month-long election sh- show on the ABC. Are you going to stop all of it? Uh, look, look, we'll do our best. I think, I think politicians know what we look like now. I think they've got our photos on their, on their comcar doors. So I don't, think, I don't think we're snitching up on anyone. Look, I'd love to have an eight-month election show, but I think that we'd end up swinging our own throats if we did that. The, uh, I think that, uh, that this is good. This is very good. It gives a lot of, lot of time to actually pay attention and to learn what all these big words mean so we don't embarrass ourselves in about six months' time. So, so thanks for that. We're going to be hearing more from you. And I'm going to go to Caitlin here now. Caitlin, what is the big issue for you this year for this election? Um, well, I was just saying to you guys before that I'm a, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a green girl at heart, but when Julia brought in the carbon tax and was talking about a renewable clean energy future, um, I thought that was a great idea, but we haven't actually seen anything really in the papers or I uh, haven't seen much on the internet on how we're investing in that from the carbon tax. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm 29 years old, we live in that environment, which is a pretty green area. Um, and just want to know, like, for our children, say, for years to come, where are they going to get their energy from? Thank you, because I just want to hear you, Adam. Yeah, Adam, I want to put this to you. Um, the government has been positioning itself as, you know, doing something about climate change, creating marine parks, stopping super trawlers. Are the Greens going to lose votes like Caitlin to the government at this election? I think no, that. look, as the Minister alluded to, the reason that we're taking this action on climate change in this Parliament is because we've got a minority government and because we elected more Greens. And I think, getting back to basics, the first job of government should be to care for the country's people and the environment. And I think at this election, people will be asking who's got the best plan to make that happen because it means standing up to powerful interests like the fossil fuel lobby, uh, it means standing up to multinational mining companies so that we can raise enough money to do things like boost New Start and New Slayance by $50. And I think at the end of the day, uh, people will realise that it's only the grains that you can trust to stand up to those powerful interests. And that's why we've got $13 billion going towards renewable energy that um, you're going to start see starting to flow um, in the coming months. You've actually been living on New Start this week, haven't you, Adam, to see what it's like as um, you're campaigning for an increase in that allowance? Yeah, it's pretty grim. Um, start with $246 and then by the time you take out rent and factor in some basics for food, I've, I'm on about $7 a day at the moment. I'm down to day three and there's only $13 left and I think we've got people in this country living in poverty and in a first world country we shouldn't have the dole so low that it's a barrier to people getting into employment and we shouldn't have kicked single parents off their parenting payment where they could work a few extra hours onto the dole and uh, that's what we need to fix and it's only the green will say here's where we can raise the money from to fund the services that Australians expect to be cutting that, everything or raising taxes on everyone else. Yeah, New South's definitely going to be an issue this election. I'm just going to go to call Rod here, Rod Schneider, he's a member of the Queensland Liberal National Party. Young member there. Rod, how are you? 
I'm very well, thanks, lady. Well, what's your reaction? Do you think that this is a clever political move by Julie Gillard and you're worried about what it will ha- impact it will have for Liberal Coalition voters? No, Liberal I think it's, it's, it's a very uh, defensive move. I think it's just a move uh, to you know, delay everything as long as possible and hope Tony Abbott stuffs up in the next eight months. <laughs> Do you think that's what's going to happen? This is more than likely. <laughs> well, that's uh, well, well, I don't think so. It <laughs> well, hasn't happened for the last, uh, uh, you know, he's been able to maintain that lead for a couple of years uh, now, mm-hmm. so I think so. Uh, I wouldn't uh, bet against uh, Tony Abbott, the marathon man, getting his way through the marathon campaign. Well, and it'll be interesting, is Gillard going to last? We all know, Joel, that you're a rud man. Is Gillard going to still be the one we vote for in September? If people are going to vote that way, they're going to vote. didn't vote for Gillard the first time. No. <laughs> There's four seconds left. Anyway, thanks to everyone. We'll keep you up there the next eight months. See you later.